say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Hey, Wesley. Hello, glorious. I cannot read that. What, can you see what Wesley says, Tina? Good morning. Hello, good morning from Jackson, Tennessee. Amen. Woo, thank you. Kathy Christian, good to see you. And my little brother down in Georgia, Pastor Robbie Inchkin. Amen. Hallelujah. God's so good. Him and his Harley. Wom, wom, wom. Went out riding yesterday. I said I did too until my pony got unplugged at the grocery store. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got it. I know. <laughs> it took a minute to get to Canada, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. Electric horsey. Amen. Gloria. Glenn, he just, he already knows. He just knows. Amen. Praise God. And, uh, and then they got that little old car that's there. You know, it comes unplugged sometimes, too. You know, and the motorcycle. Whoa, whoa. Do you love Jesus? I said, do you love the Lord? I want you to turn with me to Galatians chapter 2. Wow. We started Wednesday night talking about embracing our identity, our new identity in Christ Jesus. I, I, I'm going to tell you that Wednesday night was lit. Hallelujah. It, it was on fire. Glory to God. And uh, I mean, just like, whoa. It went from hello to zoom. We were flying. Glory to God. But uh, Galatians chapter 2. Amen. We're glad all of you are on with us this morning. Amen. We just believe God's miracle working power is working in this place and touching you at the point of your need. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, now we'll get to verse 20. Look at it. He can't wait. Amen. It is Galatians 2.20. Amen. But uh, Pastor Wesley and Tabitha there in Jackson, we love you. And, and if we're still live on the wall, we appreciate all of you. We love you. Glennis, hello. Praise God. Amen. We praise God. Amen. Now, we, we have other churches that join with us. Amen. Is that good? That God's good. Amen. That's good. That's God who connecting you together. And we're praying for one another. And I'm so thankful for what they've done that outside. Uh, they're on their property. They had this building they bought. And they put the building out there. And out there on the ground with no floor. Amen. Old school. Dirt and grass. And they throw stuff down on it and rugs and things like that. And they had church. Amen. And then when the rains came, it flooded. It took, I don't know how many gallons of buckets of water they had to get off of it. But this last month, somebody say last month, last month. God provided the financing to put six inches of concrete down for a floor. Yeah. Amen. And God did that for them. And now they're able to go in into a dry, nice place to be able to have praise God and, and, and to praise God and to worship and to preach and teach and touch people's lives in that area. Amen. God's good. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. And it won't be just a few months. That'll be paid off and they'll be debt free. Amen. But I believe that God's going to do something before then. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Galatians 2, verse 20. I love this scripture. Galatians 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Now, there's two sides of the transaction here. Galatians 2 and verse 20. Two sides. There's more, but two that I'm going to focus on. Number one, we're crucified with Christ. Amen. We're crucified with Christ. 
And then number two, we're alive unto God. Amen. It's not I that liveth, but it's Christ within me that lives. Amen. See, Paul is describing a new way of thinking, a brand new way of thinking. Paul is saying there is a new way of thinking, hallelujah, that he wants us to be able to embrace. It is a way of viewing ourselves in the way of relating to the world around us, but with the eyes of Jesus and with the word of God pouring out of us and his spirit upon and inside of us. And so, number one, there's two benefits I want to talk about embracing the new identity. A new identity. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm a new creature. It's no longer who I was. It's who I am now. Thank God for who I was because without being who I was, I couldn't be who I am now. Oh, amen. Thank God for who I was. But praise God for who I am now and who I'm becoming. Amen. And then he says, according to the word, that old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Amen. It's a work of grace. Amen. Spiritually, we've all been changed. We've been changed. But how many know it's a work every day? I mean, it's a work every day. Somebody pulls off in front of you. Somebody gives you the one finger salute. Somebody screams at you. Somebody, you find out real quick how quick you are to grow. And you're like, oh, we need to grow. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you hear me? Do you need to grow? Amen. We all need a little growing room. Amen. Hallelujah. What was that? Huh? (laughs) Was that you? Amen. (laughs) You talking to me? Amen. Hallelujah. You got to do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right. You're talking to me. Amen. So, you know, when I'm tempted to behave according to the old nature, we got to do something about that. Amen. You know, the enemy wants to poke the bear. You know, the enemy, and then there's people out there that want to poke. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I've told some people, you, don't poke the bear. You don't want that. Amen. I mean, I, I'm thank God I'm saved, been living with Jesus for a few years, but don't get me cornered. Amen. <laughs> I'm thank God that God's working in me. I'm not the man I used to be, thank God, Doc. I'm a new creature. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. We have to die daily, as Paul said. So Paul said, die daily. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Amen. Nevertheless, I live. But he said, goes on to say, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. You know, when, when temptation comes... In any form, in any form, that appeals to the flesh. Amen. Whether it's the eyes, amen. The eyes wants what it wants. The hands want what it wants. You know, a thief, they steal because that's because that's who they are. They're a thief. Amen. A liar lies because they are a liar. A sinner sins because that's who they are. Amen. Hello, somebody. That's their nature. That's their nature. A lustful person is because the way they are, they hadn't crucified their flesh. They have not handled that area of their flesh and their eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. And, 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 it, and it's easy for some folks to say, boy, I'll tell you one thing, that person, no verse, this but then when you're pointing that one finger, you got four coming back at you. Careful. Cautious. Amen. We all ain't there yet. 
None of us are perfect, Doc. Amen. None of us are perfect. We all need a little work. Amen. A little, uh, a little adjustment here and there. Praise God. That's why we come to church. That's why we pray. That's why we read the Bible. And we allow God through the Holy Spirit to work on us. Amen. There's times that I want to work on some folks too. Amen. But I'm not the man I used to be. Praise God. I'm a new creature. Amen. Now, <clears throat> I, I have found that when those things come against me, that I can say, now I've, I've started doing this even more now, Peggy, than ever. No, I, that's not the way I am no more. I'm, I'm not that person no more. No, I, I'm not. That don't appeal to me. No, and sometimes I'll say it out loud. No, that don't appeal to me. Amen. Those thoughts come. No, those are not my thoughts. No, those thoughts are not God thoughts. Hello. Amen. We all have thought. That's why we, what do we do? What do we do? Casting down every imagination and every thought that come against the, uh, the knowledge of God. Amen. We, we cast them down. How many know if you leave them there, they'll, they'll fester. They'll begin to work in you. Amen. Oh, they'll grow. Man, they'll grow. They'll grow into a monster that, that will take you over. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a new creature. And I, I, I lay those things down. I cast those thoughts down. I cast them down. I, I, I scrutinize them through the word. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Amen. So I found, I found actually, if I say it out loud, no, that's the old me. I'm not going to be a part of that. That part's crucified. Amen. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creature. I'm crucified with Christ. I don't have to live according to the flesh that dictates my old nature. I'm crucified. I'm crucified. Amen. I, I, that's not the old me. Amen. That's the old me. That's the old me. I, I, that don't appeal to me no more. That don't appeal to me no more. Amen. You know, I, I was flipping the TV here. And I've said this quite a few times over the last few years. I don't, I don't watch a lot of things that I used to watch. Not, not that it was wrong. For most people, it's probably not wrong. But for me, it was wrong. Why? Because I have fought hard to get to the place I am in God now. The place of where I, I'm able to see, where I'm able to hear, the anointing that I'm able to walk in now that I wasn't walking in before, it, 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 it takes, a, it, it, it eats away. And, and, and you, you have to make choices. You have to make choices in life. You know, what's important for your marriage? Is it, it you, you, they're sacrificed. Yes, yeah, th thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you. There are sacrifices we make for each other. Amen? To be able to be there for one another, to understand one another. So, so, amen, amen. Oh, wow. Mm, 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 mm. When you first saw her, oh, wow, he's like, whoo. But you didn't know the whole package until you got married. And you got married, you've been together six or eight months and nine months, a year. And you're like, wow, I didn't know she was, whoo. Wow, she she's really talkative, amen, and, and she repeats a lot. Or, 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 or she leaves the toilet paper the wrong way than the way I do it. Toothpaste is wrong. I, I have our own toothpaste. We solved that problem, amen. Are you still here, amen? Uh, we got our own toilet paper. We've got two different bathrooms. Thank God for two bathrooms, amen. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. We've solved it, amen. But look. You, you learn how to work together. Amen. You learn how to work together to make the thing work. Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork. If the engine on the car, if the oxygen is not right and the gas is not right and this is not right, it's not going to combust the way it's supposed to and it's not going to run good. Amen. I thank God. I thank God that our engine at home and our engine together as a man and wife, husband and wife, works together. We, we work together 
good. We answer each other's questions sometimes. We, we Sometimes she's down. She's had a few days here recently. Amen. And, and that's when you pull together because you know part of you's down. Because the Bible says when a man, hello, and they marry, they become what? One flesh. All of a sudden, it's not her battling. It's us battling because we're one flesh. Something's missing. Something ain't right. And, and I'll look at her sometime. I'll say, mm-hmm. And then last night, I looked at her and I said, look, honey, I love you. And she said, I'm good. I'm good. I said, I know you are. However, about right here. Wait a minute. No, it's right here. Right here in, in, in your mind. Amen. Because we're one. We're one. She feels it. I feel it. Sometimes she'll look at me and we'll sit down together and she'll look at me and go, what's up? I said, what do you mean? Been praying. I said, thank you for praying. But, but you know, just because I'm going through something isn't automatically I'm going to tell her because, number one, I don't want to worry her. I don't want to concern her. Amen. But yet, yet you're, on, you're on track, but I'm not going to tell you. Well, by saying that, that opened the door of, you don't want me to know. You know, and then that attitude starts. Amen. Hey, 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 Tim, that, that, that attitude. Amen. But you learn to work through that. You learn to work through that. I'm okay physically. I'm good. I'm good. Just going through a battle in my mind. It's okay. Well, what, what are you battling? Is it battling because you don't love me no more? Is it that? I'm like, please listen, Lord help. I mean, hey, amen. We're one. We know each other. And you know what's best to do? Just go ahead and say, look, this is what's going on. I'm fine. I'm going to tell you this is it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Me and Jesus have got it figured out. This is where we're at. Amen. And so we click along. Somebody say click, click, click. Sometimes you just have to do that. But then there's other times I pray. And me and Father figure it out. Amen. Then I'll say, you know, praise God. Why didn't you tell me? Amen. Because I wanted you to be in your happy place. Amen? Because it's important to me. Hello? As a husband, it's important for me for her to be in her happy place. Just as much as it is for me to be in my happy place. Because we're one. Amen? One flesh. Now, that didn't cost you anything. That's a side road. Amen? That rabbit trail run off, and I had to catch that rabbit for a minute. Amen? You love them enough to put a ring on that finger and walk down the aisle, you've invested some valuable time. Amen? You know, I, I told her here a while back, I, I, we, we kid about this, and I'll say, look, we've been married 18 years plus now. Amen? And, uh, you know, don't, don't do nothing stupid and leave. I'm sure not going to do nothing dumb. Amen? Because I've invested too much time in you. And I ain't got enough time to train another one. Amen. <laughs> Wait, a minute. Wait a minute. What are you wanting to train? Oh, it's training you on that end of the bush. Okay, I got you. But see, you know, guys, listen, listen. We think we're in control. <laughs> no. Uh, not today, you're not. <laughs> I see she cut them off a little bit too, buddy. <laughs> I love you, Tim. That's to, I understand when she allows you to get them out of the dryer. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now listen, listen. We <laughs> God's good. God's good. Now see, everything must be going pretty good at your house. Y'all laughing. Amen. It's good to love one another, to work out issues. You know, I'd like to go to Washington and lock them all in a room, take their phones away from them, take food from them, and, and spank every one of them. Amen? Well, I'll get the oil first. We're going to get rid of the devils. I mean, they're they going to all be up there going, how'd we get up here? You know, I don't know. Did we got voted in? How'd we get here? Amen? Amen. What are y'all doing in here? We're in here with the Democrats. We're in here 
we're in here with you. What are y'all doing in here? What are we doing? Well, there's a preacher said y'all had to come in here and sit till you got alone. And we're going to pass some things. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You can't do that. Well, they can do anything they want to do. Why can't I do that? Amen. Hallelujah. Then the power of the Lord bring down term limits. Amen. Term limits. Amen. Some of them need to go home. They need some just really need to really go home. Amen. Now look with me. Crucified with Christ means my realm of activity is no longer in the arena of sin. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to that. I'm a new creature. When people say that, that doesn't mean that we can't still sin. We're all in the human flesh. We're going to make mistakes. That's why 1 John 1, 9 is there. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. Somebody said, well, that's just a license of sin. People have been sinning for years without a license. <laughs> he just got it. Amen. Amen. That's true. Listen, listen. People get up in the nighttime trying to figure out new ways of doing stuff. Just like those people, those people that want to scam us out of twenty dollars, or want us to get three hundred. You got four million dollars coming to you. We just need three thousand dollars sent to us. Amen. On a card. And the sad thing about now, we laugh about that, but I have known people that fell for it. And somebody here, right close by here, within a thirty-mile radius. Two people have done that. That's so sad. Emptied out their bank for that scam. See how the enemy works? For that person, that was the level that it took them out. Amen. Wow. And then the enemy uses another tactic on you. You, you know, We'll say, well, that was just dumb. I wouldn't have never fell for that. But what would you fall for? He knows. He knows exactly what button to push. He knows what area to push on to be able to get you to fall or I to fall. And that's why we need to pray for one another and be there for one another and encourage one another. Amen. 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 And not come down on somebody when they come out and they'll say, you know, I've got a real serious question. It may sound stupid. It may sound ignorant. But I need, I need some advice. And then not come down and laugh and, even though it sounds silly to us. But our little thing might sound silly to them. Amen. That's why we come together in one mind, one accord. Amen. To be able to encourage, to exhort one another. To teach one another. You know, the older women in the church is supposed to, what, train and teach the younger women? Yeah. I tell you, there's a lot of that missing over the years. Amen. Amen. Wow, mercy sakes. A lot of that missing. I mean, so, Grandma would slap half the kids these days. Amen. I mean, I mean, she, she would come to church and bring clothes to put on them. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Amen. Hallelujah. Cover it till you're married. Cover it till you're married. And share it with him, not everybody else. I don't need to see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, that's good preaching, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you got to step into pastor's car and look at him and say, is my blouse too low? <laughs> it's too low. And number one, you already knew it. Amen. That's what mirrors are for. Amen. Yeah. 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 And I said, I said, you cannot get in this car like that. Can I sit in the front seat? No way. Oh, no, no, no. Amen. Are you here? Hallelujah. That's like saying, is this spandex or riches too tight? Oh, no, no. Uh, now, Colossians 1, 13. Now, some of us are laughing here because we've been there before, okay? We've been there. 
and we're growing. And so we want you to know we love you. You may be in that area where you're growing and you're learning, and and, and don't take that as um, a condemnation. Just realize that, that God loves you. And, you know, so many of the young girls out there, you know, they're advertising. I mean, that's lack of a better way of saying it. Young men, some of them too, amen, advertising. And we have to be cautious because there's a lot of craziness in the world. But even now in the last days, there's even more crazy going out. Amen, there's a lot of demonic forces. Amen. 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 Now, Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13 says that God has delivered us from the power of darkness. God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Out of darkness into the light. Because in him is there is no darkness at all. Amen. He delivered us from the power, whatever power was in the darkness and in the darkness, he's delivered it from. He's delivered us from it. Amen. I used to be so afraid of the dark. I mean, I'd hear a noise, I'd, woo! Amen. He tried that game on me here not long ago, Peggy. I turned around, I went right back at it, and I flipped the light out. I said, show your bad self, because I will not walk in fear in Jesus' name. Will not walk in fear. What do you do if something touches you? I've been touched a few times. I will not fear. God said he would never leave me nor forsake me. He would be with me always. Amen. Always. Always. We were Wednesday night, and I was about halfway through the message, and I said, I knew when you walked in the door, when you, if you heard me say that, I knew when you walked in the door, there was an angel come and bump my chair. And I looked, and I'm like, well, Mama's way over there. Hello, how are you? Amen. God shows up, and he comes to do things, and the power of God went forth Wednesday night. I believe people's lives around this country were touched by God's word that went forth. Amen. And the anointing broke barriers in people's lives and bondages. Amen. Now, see, you and I now live in the kingdom of his dear son. We're, we're no longer of this world. Amen. <laughs> we still have to have an earth suit to be here. Amen. We're aliens. Who's like, do you believe in aliens? Yes, I do. I am one. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to go back to heaven in a mothership. Hallelujah. Boy, people mess up and they're like, oh, yeah. he believes in aliens. I'm not, not the kind that Hollywood puts out. Amen. Are you still here? Amen. Hallelujah. No longer love the things of the world. Hallelujah. Now, Galatians 6.14 says, <clears throat> But God forbid that I should boast except, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been, by the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. Amen. Hallelujah. The benefit of embracing our identity in Christ is, it, 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 and I'm crucified to Christ, yet I live. Amen. I'm a dead man walking. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. Yeah, Jesse said that. He was crazy. Amen. Love Jesse. Walked into that minister's meeting. Looked there and said, how you doing today? I'm blessed to the Lord and highly favored. That's the only thing I know to say, amen. I mean, that's, I'm not good, amen. Yeah, face to face, had dinner with him and Jerry Slagle. Uh, Jerry Slagle. Jerry Savelle, amen. 
Yeah. Like right here and right here. Amen. Powerful time. We'll, we'll do that one day this week. We'll talk about that. Amen. Now, second benefit of seeing ourselves the way that what God opens up, the flow of God and grace in our lives. Thank God for grace. Amen. Thank God for grace. Thank God for grace that saves us. But that same grace that saved us keeps us. Ooh. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that divine enablement. The operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives that empowers us to live for God and to have effective ministry. It's His grace. I thank God for His grace and mercy, Doc. His grace and mercy. I thank God for, you know, God, the grace, grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, G R A C E. But I thank God for those things. But I thank God for the power that keeps me. That power that keeps me. He, he keeps me. Grace is ours because of the cross. Grace is not just for being born into the kingdom. It's also keep us living in the kingdom. Amen. Living in the kingdom. Living in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Living. Living and thriving and growing in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just for our justification. Grace is for our ongoing sanctification. Our ongoing sanctification. Hallelujah. Not just saved, filled. Amen. Saved, healed, saved. Hallelujah. Sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And then then get on out there and live like the devil the rest of your life. No. No. That same justification and sanctification is a onward work. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm saying on my way to heaven. Amen. Well, let's let the Holy Spirit work in our lives because we all need work. Amen. I said we all need work. We all need work. We all need work. Amen. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Not just for justification, but it's an ongoing sanctification. An ongoing washing. Washing of the water of the word. Inside out, our minds are renewed. When you stay in the word, the word renews our mind. It rewires us. Hi! Greg, you about jump straight up, man. Then he just, wow, amen. That word of God rewires us, Peggy. It rewires us. It rewires us. You know, somebody can come up here and you've got a, a sound system and they come up there and unplug everything. It's going to take me a few minutes to get it right, but I can do it. But you've got somebody that's a sound technician that understands and his job would be he already had it labeled. He already knows where everything is going to go and the color code are either written on there. And all he does is look at it and go, go ahead. Amen. The word rewires us. God knew what he was doing when he put the word in us and he sent it the word, which was Jesus, John, Talks about it. Amen. There was a man. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And the word was God and God was, hey, hey, hey. And he began to put him inside of us. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Whew. You know, Jesus sent his word and healed them. God sent his word and sanctified and filled them, amen, and set them free. And that word keeps us alive. That word sanctifies us. That word rescues us, and it changes us. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Amen. <clears throat> Grace is not just for justification, but also ongoing sanctification. Paul told the Galatians, he said, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? 
Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Amen. No, God forbid. Amen. God forbid. (laughs) His whole argument was this. It was by grace you came into the kingdom, but grace doesn't end there. We're to grow in grace. Grow in grace. Somebody say grow. Grow. So immediately after his declaration, Paul said in Galatians 2.21, I do not set aside, uh, Revised Standard says nullify, King James says frustrate. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Hello, somebody. If grace comes through the law, Jesus died in vain. What was the purpose? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If you could do it by your own resolve or your own willpower, what would you need God for? Amen. That Holy Spirit begins to work in us to will and to do his good pleasure. Oh, so it's grace from the beginning to the end. And that's why it tells us in uh, Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. He's the developer. <laughs> oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. He's the author, developer. He's the ongoing one inside of us creating us to be who we are to be in God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. He's our everything. He's, he's that marvelous one. He's wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the soon coming King, the baptizer, the healer, restorer, justifier. Amen. Glory. He's the one that fills us with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. And that fire burns up (laughs) all that wood, hay, and stubble in our lives. Some people need a real big fire to burn for a while. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Amen. Amen. Now, I heard somebody come against a, a, a brother, Brother Copeland, years ago. I probably still got that CD set. I don't know. No, it was cassette set. And uh, <clears throat> said that people were coming against him about what he was teaching and the Word and talking about what the Holy Ghost fire did. And, <clears throat> and he said, well, I pray that anything that's not of God, that God burns it up. Amen. Amen. And that man said, I pray that God will just burn down everything you have, everything you have bought, everything you live in, everything you have. I'm like, well, that's a devil, amen? And then Kenneth said, he said, listen, he said, I just say, Father, anything that's not what's supposed to be here and what you haven't blessed us with, anything that's not of you, burn, 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 amen? We got to learn that God gives, amen? And the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came to give. He's a good God. He's a good God. He wants us to be blessed, but he don't want us to go to excess. He wants us to be blessed, but he don't want us to go to excess. Amen. And obsess over crazy stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. People get obsessed with certain things. You know, two cars is not enough. Got to have six. And then another one says, oh, no, 12. Got to have 12. Oh, oh got to have 12, man. Uh, 12 of this and 12 of that. Amen. And two Lamborghinis and three Pintos. Amen. Whatever, you know. I mean, look. Excess. Amen. Excess. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You know what? Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. 
Can hallelujah. Glory. God's so good. You know, I got uh, something I saw here recently this week. Somebody, and I'm not condoning this, I'm just making a comment. This is a <coughs> comment. He won $21 million in the lottery. And he got, I think he got about $11 million of it. And a year, a year and a half later, he was broke. I mean, he didn't know how to handle money before he got it. Amen. If you, whatever comes in, an inheritance or a lawsuit or whatever, you better have somebody that can handle the money, a money person, that they can handle it and run it for you. And you have money over here because if you can't handle $50 a day or $100 a week, you're sure not going to be able to handle $11 million. Amen? Right, Doc? You better have a a financial person. Amen? You you, you better go get you a CPA. Amen? You better get you somebody else that knows how to do it. Because otherwise, that stuff will drain out of you. Now, I I remember Daddy telling me, he said, yeah, yeah, we've got this much in the bank. We've got three banks, and we've got this much in these banks. He said, but one cataclysmic or uh, uh, very catastrophe can drain that so quick. Amen? Amen. And it did. Amen? And, you know, because it had that uh, one, uh, one account was 300000 and it lasted, you know, a period of time because we had to have people that worked 100000 had to, had to uh, stay in the house, had to take care of the home, had to pay the employees, had to pay those that was there taking care of mom and the property and grass. I mean, you, you add it up. Amen. And when daddy was alive, he cut the grass. He, he used that tractor. He was there. He took care of mom. He did this. He did that. There wasn't, I mean, that money kept growing and growing. Amen. You better find ways of causing that money to grow so it don't out, uh, so you don't outlive it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> if you outlive it, you're in trouble. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's called dial a friend. <laughs> hey. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Now, just think. If you take that same fella, if he'd have had someone to handle that, And they put that there, and they put some in a uh, annuity that would grow, and you could add to it. You've got some over here in a money market, and you've got this one in here, and you got this, and some in gold, some in silver, some in there. Different things, different things, amen? That money would continue to grow over time, even though they've still got some in the bank, even though they may have a little bit of change in their pocket, amen? You forget about that money that's out there and let it work. Let it work. Amen. Let it work for you. And all of a sudden that, you know, this much, all of a sudden you say, well, it costs this much to have them to do that. Well, they're not going to do it for free, friend. Amen. Hallelujah. You neither stumble over what you're trying to do and lose it all or pay somebody a certain percentage of it to be able to manage it for you. Amen. Well, that didn't cost you nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord. I I do not accredit myself to be any kind of money managed, but I do listen to the Spirit and let Him talk. Amen. Praise God. He's smart. He's smart. He's a genius, Doc. The Holy Ghost is a genius. He's a genius. He knows where all the silver and gold's at. Amen. Wow. Amen. And then some people want to be humble and say, well, I'm just humble, I'm just humble, I'm humble, I'm humble. Quit being ignorant, amen. Come on, somebody. Be seriously, folks, as Tina says, seriously, folks. Now, (laughs) nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me. See, when my faith is resting upon him, then my life is expressed. His life is expressed through me. When my faith is resting upon him, his life is expressed 
through me. Hallelujah. You know, you read in Romans 6 and chapter 7 and chapter 8, and it tells us about this life of faith and the victory of what it's all about. I like victory. Anybody like victory? Woo, I love living in victory. Woo. Glory to God. See, we receive with joy and decide to live in it. Oh, thank God. I love living in it. I love living in the grace of God, Peggy. I love walking in the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. <laughs> I love the joy. People say, well, ain't nothing to be happy about. That's different. I ain't talking about happy. Happy comes and goes. Joy sustains me. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things went on in the world the last few years I'm not happy about. Amen. But I'm joyful because I know where I'm going. I know where I'm headed. I know he's already got it figured out. I'm not happy with the decisions. Amen. You know, the president was asked the other day, well, what's some good advice you could give us? And he looked at all these children and he said, don't get COVID. Don't get COVID. I'm like, well, that's a given. I mean, look into someone that is a leader of the free world. One thing you could give us that would help us, and you give us something that everybody knows. Don't get COVID. Amen. I thank God I've got one higher than him, amen, <laughs> that no matter who's in that White House or the out house or whatever you want to call it, I know and I pray for the leaders of this country. I pray for the leaders, amen, I pray for that office because there's some in the Old Testament that were leaders of the country. They were ungodly and they did ungodly, terrible, terrible things that brought people into judgment, brought even the people of God into bondage. Amen. Amen. Well, we're just supposed to be friendly. We've got to be friendly. We've got to love everybody. That's true, but I don't, I don't love no devils. Amen. Hallelujah. I will not bow to no devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I've had people try to be, uh, to walk in that racist thing, you know. You know. And uh, whether you're, or whoever. And I've had somebody try that with Doc. Doc knows. Amen. And I said, you know, we don't walk that train. Amen. Amen. That, that's my that's my friend. That's my friend. And, and, and if you don't like that, you can go on with your happy self. And I tell people this is my little sister. Amen. I don't go by skin color. Because we're all sin drenched when we come to Christ. We're all blackened with sin. But then we've turned white. Hallelujah. Through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're all washed and become spotless like snow. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I had a, uh, I had a, oh, I'm going to close with this. I had a, uh, we call one of them skinhead, not skinhead, but, uh, uh, Ku Klux wanted to debate with me. Back when I was younger, when I was younger, I, I, I didn't have as much grace. <laughs> I wasn't as pretty in the way I expressed my words then. Amen. I didn't cuss. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> and they come up with all this stuff, and I said, so you believe that you're the supreme race? I thought, I believe we can find some skeletons in your closet. You know, how long are you going to talk a little bit? Let's see. Amen? 
because we didn't come from American soil. Adam came from somewhere else. And he wasn't no white boy. Hello! He wasn't no white boy. And they look at you like, huh? That old country dog look. What? Well, Adam didn't come from white boy. Whoa. Amen. They, they want a kick and all this stuff. Uh, you, so you, uh, so you, 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 you agree with that? Mike? look, I don't agree with none of you. Amen. I'm going to agree with what Jesus said, to love all people. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Woo. Jesus is good. Amen. You got to learn how to love one another. Learn how to get along. If you don't, put you over in that other bus. Wide is the way to destruction. Amen. Sure didn't get quiet in here. Amen. Amen. Well, did you get anything out of the day? Hallelujah. Let's pray for our folks at home. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, through the means of Facebook, Meta, and also YouTube around the world, we thank you, Lord, for touching lives, for healing, restoring marriages, restoring people's minds. Lord, those that are grieving from their loved ones passing from this world to the next, we pray for them, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for the power of God that goes forth from here to you. And I pray in Jesus' name, if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord. Come into my life. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I'll live for you now. Amen. Get in a good church, a good Bible-believing church, a good church that teaches God's Word, that believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that believe in laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. Amen? God's good. We love you until Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on the Powerhouse Hour. We'll see you then. We love you. Amen? Praise God.